Welcome to the 8020 show presented by your host, Jason Yee. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the 8020 show hosted by Jason Yee. I am the one Jason Yee that I was speaking of earlier, that that magical voice was talking about earlier. (laughs) And here at Train 2.0, I'm doing this presentation because the coolest thing is happening, the internet. I know it was around like, uh, let's say 1990, I don't know. I don't know when it was invented, but this really cool thing called the internet is happening where I can, with your help, design a crowdsourced A-B tested at the absolute fastest rate possible set of instructions so players can learn magic mechanics so much faster than anything else ever in history for hockey sports whatever and i'm treating myself as the human guinea pig to see if this stuff works and this is just phenomenal because i've been able to post my videos get some feedback uh get people say oh what about this what about that hey you know you're maybe you need to do this maybe you need to do for this faster oh, that's looking good and at the absolute fastest rate possible i can make adjustments and see what works and see what doesn't and then what i do is i share that with you either through little tidbits here and there um online like this i give little hints pepper uh little hints all around the social medias and the youtubes and When you are ready to have the whole pie, that's in the Train 2.0 membership area where I put all the secrets. And right now, what we're just doing is we're going to see if this stuff works. So today, um, I'm pretty excited because, you know, I started the Patrick Kane challenge yesterday. And then today, I think... You guys let me know, like, seriously, hold me accountable, be honest with me, do I pass the Patrick Kane challenge? Let me know. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring up my video from today. Well, I'll show you a few of my videos, actually. And you guys let me know, did I pass or am I all out of it? So here's the very first one that I did. Okay, this is my very first attempt. You can see slow, choppy, lose the puck. Feet are not too nice. That's my first attempt. Okay, it's just from watching it, you know, 10,000 hours of stick handling the wrong way. but I had the right grip code and I was using my feet and stuff. So that was the first attempt. You know, not bad, losing the puck. Yucky, still hadn't learned the pattern. Next. So this is it. This is the actual, well, almost the pattern. It's like 99% the pattern. Um, but this attempt took 11 seconds. And as you guys will be able to see... Um, my buddy R. Massey here did not like uh, my attempt. He didn't quite understand the uh, the whole idea of this, but <laughs> so that that was that, and that was yesterday, literally yesterday. And I had the right mechanics. I just hadn't practiced it yet. So then this was today. I'm pretty happy about this. This is of course one puck. Okay, um, this took. Eight seconds to complete. So that attempt was eight seconds. Patrick Kane's attempt was also eight seconds. So what I'm curious to hear from you guys is, um, how do I shut this off? Shush. What I'm curious to hear from you guys is if you guys go to Instagram and watch it either comment on YouTube 
or comment on Instagram uh, or send me an email or text. Let me know if there's anything I'm missing because if it's a check mark and we are uh, and it's good and you know I did it in the right time, I hit the right pattern and my mechanics are all dialed in, we call that a, a check, a past attempt. If there's something that's missing, maybe let me know. Maybe I don't go wide enough on my arc. Maybe arc, uh, maybe my pattern isn't quite right. Maybe my mechanics are off. You guys, you guys be the judge. Let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to say it's a pass. Because <laughs> um, I did the pattern, I did enough time, and I think the mechanics are okay. But I'm open to hearing otherwise. So that's what happens in less than 24 hours. Um, and that's not because I change anything other than the magic mechanics and I use video feedback to 10x my learning rate just like I suggest in the Train 2.0 80-20 Club membership area. All right, next. Here's what happened next. I attempted this. <laughs> attempted. A little rough. Oh, yuck. <laughs> Do you see these like big pauses in between each each step losing it, you know, like not able to kind of keep that rhythm like oh slow slow oh oh bumping into pox. Oh, and then you see there I get tense at the end. I try to move it with my bottom hand. It's just yuck. Gross. <laughs> so that was the that was that first um, attempt at just free flow, um, and then what I isolated previously from videos is is kind of three movements that Kane goes through. And so the first one is this: when Kane goes and attacks, he does kind of like a double forehand dribble. So he goes. I don't know if you saw. I can't back it up on Instagram, but um, he does a double forehand dribble. Then he goes to the backhand and then he goes kind of around the puck. So there's a double forehand dribble. He goes backhand around and then he goes around the back um, again. So what I essentially did was um, isolated that movement and then worked on getting smoother and smoother. Now this is one of my nicer attempts. <laughs> uh, let's just say the pucks were flying around a little bit. But this is all about um, getting those micro movements that uh, he actually uses that are just they're, they're incredibly detail um, oriented. Uh, so that's essentially what I was doing there was going through and and pinpointing the the, the way the puck was was going on his blade and on his stick. And then working to have it so that that is is similar. It's smooth. It's fast. It's it's um, um, it's as quick as what Kane is doing. Because like I said, there's really only three or four moves he's doing there. Don't know who that is. Apologies. Um, but uh, there's really as he's dangling through the pucks, right, with a multi puck. There's really only three or four moves he's executing. Uh, plus a really fast dribble. So what I the eighty twenty of that is if you can get the dribble, you can get those three or four moves, and then you can link them all together. Then you've you know um, you can essentially plan, or you can you can essentially design what he did. And like I said, if my idea is correct, I'll be able to learn it, and then you'll be able to visually see it. If it's not correct then I'll adjust and then we'll figure it out and then you'll be able to see that too. Um, so I'm now curious, I'm gonna leave it to you guys to let me know what are your guys', your guys thoughts? What am I missing? So if you have any feedback, uh, if you have any thoughts, if you have any questions, now is the time to ask them. 
Um, and what I'm going to do while you guys prepare and ask your questions, if you have any today, is I'll just kind of review the key learnings from um, the, uh, the videos from today, from yesterday and today. And so go ahead and uh, if you have any questions, you might want to ask them now while I quickly review. So the main, one of the main things I learned when it comes to this is just how much your top hand is important. Um, that's probably one of the main things. And being able to do it fast was just a matter of having the right mechanics in place and then literally practicing it once or twice and then having a good sleep because your brain your brain is an amazing thing that literally learns automatically if you give it the right inputs it'll just learn right the problem is that most people do not have the right inputs so if, if you just simply give the right instructions to pretty much any player any person they can learn effortlessly and fast it's just that you know you know those times when you learn um, extremely fast and something is extremely fun to pick up and learn and do and you know you're in flow state and nothing nothing bothers you well that's what's like when you have the right instructions it, it, things are just effortless and you're able to go really quickly and progress really really quickly when it's like boring and hard and a struggle and frustration frustrating it's because you don't have the right instructions and that's not your fault or anyone else's it's just you need to find those instructions. And there's a few guides out there. Like, you know, like golf is a great sport where, you know, a lot of people have figured out how to go from zero to 60, right? Swimming is another one when it comes to um, total immersion. We need that for hockey. So that's fun. So, so someone can pick this up and learn this right away. And so, like I say, the reason I was able to pick this up and learn this right away is because of how I had the mechanics in place. Uh, I watched the video a ton I was able to get video feedback from myself and compare it to Patrick Kane um, and that's one of the things I learned so then the next thing I learned when going to the next level is that it's like part the skill and it's also part the pattern the way that you're going through the puck so is this the 80 20 of hockey yeah maybe but it's more the 80 20 of this drill right it is like choosing what pattern to go through so you'll notice like when I successfully go through here, it's because I'm attacking laterally and there's space, right? When I bang into pucks is when I'm trying to go like at a forward to back angle. So you'll see here, there, right? I'm trying to go forward to back instead of side to side. And so Kane almost never rolls his toe over and never goes forward to back. He's always moving side to side. And I guess that like a lesson there for hockey is that hockey is normally a very side to side sport and no one necessarily coaches it as such. So those are those are my key learnings so far. Uh, we'll see if there's any questions here. <laughs> Benjamin's wondering if train 2.0 can throw him a follow back. Did you follow me? Are you on are you on trade 2.0 Instagram? Let's see here. You follow me there, Ben? I'll throw I'll throw anyone a follow. <laughs> um Did you like my stuff, Ben? I don't I was How do I see this? Is Pavel Barber doing the same what? I think Pavel Barber already did it. So I'm just following his lead. How do I...
I'll get. I'm. I'm really focused on giving Ben a follow back, but Ben, I can't. I don't see. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> I uh yeah okay off topic here we'll chat we'll chat crossovers for a bit here we'll chat crossovers Vladimir um <clears throat> Paul oh Paul Cedarson you got like some random name Let me see what I can do here. Really focused on this. What you see is all there is. <laughs> all right, so we'll, let's talk about the crossovers here. Backhand side, left handers, slightly uneven hips, so it might be the problem. Crossovers, linear crossovers, easy on my forehand. Okay. Vladimir. I don't know who the phone call was from. Was that? It could have been Patrick Kane himself, wondering why I'm giving away his secrets, but I'm not. The crossovers Vladimir let's chat about the crossovers um an exercise Ben also has this uh issue the crossovers are going to be very easy if you practice the inside outside edge drill which is in the membership area it is part of the how to skate like Jack Eichel course and basically what you're going to do what it'll force you to do the intrinsic feedback of the drill is going to force you to align your hips and your feet in the right um, alignment. <laughs> so um, getting the correct rhythm, the alignment of your hips, those are little hints to have your crossover um, on your backhand work just as well as on your forehand. So the hint is your rhythm, your timing, and the alignment of your hips. Oh, Ben, you're on Twitter. Oh, I missed that part. Ah, uh, Ben, jump in here. I should have Ben in on this call here. Um, so a dirty kid. AKA Ben, I'm hoping, I think you can see that. So Ben is a consulting hypnotist. He will have a good opinion on this, a very, very good opinion. Uh, his, so Dan is saying that uh, my buddy's coach came straight out and said his kid wouldn't make the next level team next season and told him straight out why. What do you think of the honesty? Um, here's what I think. I'm interested to hear what Ben the consulting hypnotist has to say. This guy knows his stuff. Uh, here's what I would say. I would say you can make the team next year. If I was the coach, I would say you can make the team next year. Do you, I don't know if I... Yeah, try... Well, I don't know how I could... Uh, yeah, okay, try giving me a call. We'll see if we can make this make this work. Give me a call, and then I'll see if I can get the audio to, to line up, and everyone else can let me know. Here's, here would be my take. You would tell the kid they, they have every chance of making the team, and in fact, if you do these things, then you will make the team, right? Just framing it in a different way. Honesty is great, um, 
but you don't need to frame it and say that you will not make the team. That's called an embedded command, right? Which is, um, you know, think of, let's talk about this. If, if Ben can, can sort out the call, here's, oh, okay, how do I get this on my phone or on my computer? Oh, just a sec. Just a sec, Ben. Let me, I'll try. Call it. Call one more time. I, I need to adjust my. Uh, call one more time. Sorry. I hear parents all the time hypnotizing their kids to screw up. And how is that? I always. I if you if you think of the concept of embedded commands, this is a hypnotic term. Okay, this needs to kick in on my computer for this to work. Okay, it's coming in. Just a sec. Hello, Ben. Yep. Am I on the music? Are you on like delay or something here? Am I what? You must be on a delay or something here because it's like. Yeah, really weird. Yeah, it's about it's about thirty You're seconds. Talking, it, it, oh, okay. So I, I basically muted this thing, and then I, I had to pause it because it was throwing me off. It was like talking to you in the future or the past or something. It's very weird. Yeah. So, so everyone else who's on, let me know how the um, uh, volume is. But let's chat. We'll chat some hypnosis, and we'll chat some um, sure. uh, some stuff here. So what I was saying was I was in the process of saying, I hear all day long parents hypnotizing their kids, whether they want to or not, to be tired, lazy, late, um, sloppy, you name it. Because the kid, the parent says you're right. sloppy. And, and so that comes down to the embedded command within their sentences, right? So if the, if the parent is saying... Absolutely. If the parent is saying, why are, why are you so sloppy, right? embedded within that is oh yeah there's a lot of presuppositions in you are, are you so know, sloppy that they are sloppy yeah right it's brutal you're right you're absolutely right it's, it's absolutely terrible i mean i'd like to know the context of, in which this coach said this and specifically how he said it he may have thought he was trying to be helpful but what he probably did was totally dissuade the kid and make him feel demoralized and shit and said it to his face that kind of radical honesty uh, in all honesty should not be spoken um, it doesn't help, and it won't help that kid. You know, it's it's just terrible. It, it, it you know, it's bordering on abusive. It's it's beyond stupid to do. It. It just, you know, that's not how you speak to people if you want to encourage them. I mean, you know, constructive sort of feedback. Here's what you can improve upon. Here's what we're going to focus on. But I mean, you're not going to do this. That's just awful. You know, Ugh, it makes me sick to be honest with you. But you know, not criticizing him. It's not his fault either. He's just a drunk coach, obviously, right? There's a lot of them out there. <laughs> So Dan, I'm wondering if you can hear us, if this volume is is okay, and if um, that makes sense. Didn't want him to get his hopes up. Yeah, I mean, like, um, so I, I guess Terrible. you can hear. Terrible. Wow. Oh, my goodness, you want to get his hopes up. You know, I mean, there's, there's a way to do it. You say something like, I don't want to get your hopes up. I mean, the subconscious message being received is, you ain't gonna, it ain't going to happen. Right. You know, that's just, that's just terrible. I mean, it's just, it's saying, you know, you want to say to me, here's what you need to work on. To have, to have, you can say things like, to have a shot of nakedness, here's what you got to do, here's what we're going to do. But, you know, he's saying, oh, you're not going to make the team fly out. I mean, these are just self-fulfilling prophecies. It's a rare individual can say, sort of, you know, F you, and then go off and, you know, find someone that actually will work with them and tell them what they need to do to, you know, get to the next level. It, it, it's pretty, it's pretty depressing. I'm really sorry for that kid, but, yeah, this type of stuff happens all the time. Yeah, that's sort of like the same rationale that people have for saying, um, no, don't aim at the NHL, right? Like, um, everyone's goal is the NHL. Like, why are we lying about that? Like, everyone's goal is the NHL. Every kid dreams of playing in the NHL. Let's come up with a plan. Let's aim for it. And we know that the uh, probabilities are not in anyone's favor, but there's still you're still going to take you know every necessary step to get there you're going to plan it you're going to realistically look at you know 
what your possibilities are and you're going to you know take the best action to aim to to get there it's like okay like sure. hey you know go to school but um uh, no no a's for you don't i don't want to get your hopes up on that a you know <laughs> Uh, let uh, aim for that C true. instead, right? Why, wh- why would we do that in hockey? Well, I mean, obviously, the thing is not that it's important to make the point that say if you don't make the NHL, you're not a bad person, right? You know, it's it's it, you could but you're aiming for, it, and then of course you adopt the appropriate system and you work the system. So even if you don't necessarily make the NHL, you still did everything you could, and you know you still benefit from everything you've learned. Yeah, uh, you know the system that you know you teach that I'm, you know that, that you, can, you know stuff I teach hypnosis. It shows you, okay, you know we have a system, and it's gonna this stuff is transferable. Even if you don't make the NHL, you're gonna get so many benefits from this. It's just gonna make your life, you know, a thousand times better in every domain. You can learn to dominate all kinds of aspects of it. So, but this is how you maximize your chances. So, you know, um, goal. Yeah, sure, making the NHL is fantastic, but you know you want to make yourself the best hockey player you can be, the best, smartest, most, you know dominant individual you can be and then you know that'll maximize your odds of getting there really and mm-hmm. if you don't it won't matter to you because you won't you're not they're not going to be so married to it that it's the end of the world if you don't mm-hmm. that we want to avoid at all costs mm-hmm. you know it can't be nhl or nothing when i have to go jump off a cliff if i'm a failure that that's that's completely disastrous too right so i don't know if you're seeing this comment come through here benny saying that uh dan is saying that uh um, his kid told the coach he wanted to play in the NHL and Division One, and the coach said to aim for D three. <laughs> and and, yeah. and it's funny, yeah, it's not that guy's not, not his fault. He probably thought he was being helpful. Right. He probably meant well. I'm hoping so. I'm giving the benefit of the doubt. He could be a dick. We don't know for sure. But you know, it's uh, wow, brutal. You know, it's it's just this is not how you should talk to yourself, and it's not how you should talk to other people. But, you know, I mean, you know, this is the kind of thinking that didn't get him to, you know, D1 or the NHL, that's for sure. I can guarantee you that, so. Right. If he did get to the NHL or D1, he would have used a different train of thought, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. There is a a good reason that so many NHL kids make the NHL, or it will come damn close, get very Mm high, you know, AHL and other stuff. I mean, it's because, you know, they're around sort of the correct mindset and stuff. Right. And again, nobody's giving this stuff away. They're not going to tell you about, you know, I mean... You know, most professionals keep their best secrets close, close to the vest because there's there's nothing to be gained in giving away all their, you know, their their secrets, and it, it just isn't. So, you know, that's what we're here for to sort of help reveal them to you. But uh, mindset, as you keep saying, is so huge, it's not funny. So, you know, I mean, that's the thing. Here, here at Train 2.0, well, you know, I know I work with you a bit on it, and it's like, you know, that positive attitude, you know, that can do it. You have to visualize it and believe it before you'll even attempt to do it. So, anyway, totally. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about what, what happened to that kid. I, I cannot. It's just brutal. Mm-hmm. So you, you you're gonna teach these guys not to listen to that stuff and you know take control of the situation. So that's the best part about Train 2.0. Mm-hmm. Well, thank thanks Ben and and uh, Ben is in uh, in Vegas right now at a uh, at a conference. Do you want to talk about that at all? Well, I mean, you know, like anything else, it's just sort of a tune-up to meet people talk about things and there's always more to learn but um you know we're it's uh yeah i mean we're here to have fun too right <laughs> it is vegas after all so um but you know this this is, we'll be talking about a lot of things that impact uh you know sports psychology that's for sure so it, it'll be very interesting but i mean I, I can't stress this enough i mean when people say you know you can't you won't you don't i mean you just you have to not listen to that stuff you have to try mm-hmm. you have to be mentality you have to be well what can i do to maximize my chances and always, so you know, that's those are the type of people you don't listen to. Right. Um, it's 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 really destructive and unhelpful and very unfortunate. Perfect. Well, Ben, thanks for coming on. I appreciate uh, your sure. expertise. And guys, let me let us know too, because uh, um, I'm gonna have Ben on on future podcasts and members members only masterclass. Um, what, the, next next Tuesday or something is it? Or? Yeah, next Tuesday we're gonna be doing that. Um, yeah. And we're going to talk, talk hockey hypnosis. We're going to talk we're hockey hypnosis. Teach, uh, yeah. I'm going to tell, we're going to tell the story. How to, how to dominate every situation, how to dominate, you know, your, your parents, your coaches, your teammates in a good way. You'll yeah. be in control. You'll be much loved and in control and you'll get all the opportunities a lot of other people want. So nothing malicious about it. It's just being really super smart and intelligent about it. That's for sure. But uh, 
some fascinating stuff. But uh, anyway, yeah, you go back to you, do, you go back to doing your thing. I'm going to go back to listening. Okay. All right. Thanks, Ben. Thanks. For, thanks for being on. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. So that was Ben Vaughn. Um, he's actually both one of my members and one of my friends, and uh, we talk all the time. And uh, he's awesome to, um, to to have on, and he's a great resource for you guys. And uh, like I said, we're going to have him on. We're going to talk about hockey hypnosis with the members weekly webinar master class next Tuesday at, at uh, 5 p.m. So we're going to chat about hypnotizing your coach. I'm going to tell the story of how players I'm working with are hypnotizing their coaches to go from the fourth line to the first line to... Um, having, you know, hockey directors who are screaming at them, apologizing to them at the end of the talk, to, you know, getting their parents to buy them $350 worth of clothes. (laughs) Um, Just by being really nice, really great people. And if you do not think that Crosby, McDavid, Kane, etc. are hypnotizing you and everyone else around them right now, think again. I'm not saying that they are purposely hypnotizing Um, people but what I'm saying is that they have a way about them that causes people to be obsessed with them other teams their coaches fans everyone so um, anyway that is for today we chatted about the Patrick Kane um, challenge what I've learned so far we had Ben on we talked about all sorts of stuff so Thanks for watching. Here comes the outro. And listening to the 8020 show hosted by Jason Yee. Be sure to check out more at train2.0.com.